so I'm underneath the belly of the F-22 Raptor. So if you find yourself in the position that I'm in, um, if you're looking at this video, there's a good chance that you saw the video of the crash. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of comments right off the bat. The first thing I said is I made a mistake. So I caused myself to get completely thrown off, discombobulated, and just could not regain comfort. I put the flaps on. The <laughs> aircraft did. There's so much throw on this thing. Um, after flying the, the, so many damn adjustments I'd done, there was so much adjustment going on that I don't even know where I was. Anyway, I should have just restarted the thing from factory then, and I didn't. I just kept changing things and trying, changing things and trying. But anyway, I had tons of great landings, and then, of course, I hit this flaps to full, and the bird did a straight loop, just a flip, just straight looped over, and I, I recovered from that, and then I just was so jittery afterwards that, you know, there was just, I don't know, it was just, everything was against me, so that's when I said, hey, uh, I don't have safe mode, and then I figured out, because I tried to flip safe mode on when it did that flip, that's when I said, oh, there's a problem, let me go in safe, and that's my normal method, throw it in safe, and kind of get myself back together, and then get calm. Well, by me not having safe, I was flying this thing, it's moving so fast, I couldn't calm down, and I just made a mistake. Uh, you, you guys, some of you guys ate my lunch. I shouldn't be flying jets anyway. I should just quit RC altogether. You guys want to say, I don't know. You guys said some terrible things. So anyway, uh, so yeah, you guys were pretty rough on me, and uh, a lot of guys stood up and, and, and kind of, you know, agreed with a lot of stuff I was saying. So Everybody's open to their own opinions. That, you know, this is a hobby. This is, you know, some of you guys take it way too seriously, I think. Uh, but anyway, um, if you're, you end up in the predicament where you mess up your gear. I'm going to give you a look at it. Uh, I ordered some pins for the gear, and they hadn't come in yet. All I need is the pin. My gear inside of there is still good. I tried to bend it straight, and I was, like, so successful with the bending uh, to the point where I was like, oh, man, this is it. And then... One more bend, just being greedy, trying to get it super perfect, and it snapped on me. And the same thing with this back gear. Like this one, is a, this one is still a little off, but it goes in fairly decent. Um, I might I ordered quite a few pins, so when the pins come in, I might go ahead and fix that one too, and just have that extra pin that's in it as a as a spare. Um, but anyway, this side comes in spare parts, free wing. Uh, so make it make sense. I I got on free wing. Everything was was uh sold out, right? So then I look for just this part, which it comes with just this, right? So I was like, okay, cool. I can just get that. And I ordered the pins. All right, cool. Because um, my pin is what was broken. The pin goes from here to here. So I ordered the pins. And then this part was kind of broken on my gear. But I took my time and I got this like all worked out. So like this is in good condition now. Uh, but of course, I'm going to install the new one since I got it. There's far more spring tension on this one than the spring I put in there, so I probably have to work it out uh, the situation with the springs on mine and get, get it just right. So, anywho, uh, put this down. So, I'm going to break into this bag, uh, get my gear out. They give you some, the parts that make the wheel, you know, turn, but I already have all that. So, I was going to just go ahead and rewire this whole gear in. I'm going to kind of flip it over maybe and see, because this wire is fairly long. See where this plugs in, if I can see it. If I can't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this part of the gear, the part that I need. I don't even need this, but uh, I might just leave all that on just to make it all finished, because uh, I do have it right here. You can see uh, this piece. This piece here is already in there, so I could just take that off and kind of like just leave this one that's on here on here. Since it's all tightened down and ready to go, why mess with it? So that's what I think I'm going to do because I don't think the wire is going to be easily to gotten. Let me see. So, yeah, I don't see how that's going to be doable. I could probably, if I had to... Don't get me wrong, I would investigate it until it's done. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the old wire and tie a new wire, you know, the new servo lead to it to pull it in. 
but in this case I don't need to because I have everything I need there yeah oh uh, I'm sure there's a way where it comes through but I don't care I see a couple of wires going behind where I have the receiver mounted so like I said I know that's available but I don't even want to worry with it I'm gonna just take this other one apart and uh, kind of go from there so let me get it flipped back over I get the four screws for the gear taken off so this gear has a metal plate a lot of times you'll get a gear and it'll be just screwed down to the plastic portion to this and of course that breaks extremely easy so the fact that they put this uh, little metal piece on there kind of cool actually some people are making these 3d prints which I want to see if I can find one for this plane even even though I really <laughs> Up until the folly, I had very good landings, so I don't think it's a necessary thing with this aircraft per se. But they make a piece that brings this up higher, so when the gear comes up, it, it, I'll show you that when it's installed because that won't make much sense explaining it. But with a higher piece of material, it just gives you something to have back pressure against it and it gives you more, you know, value of that situation. Bracing. Alright, so let me rotate the gear. All right, so you have to rotate them in the open position to get to the the one screw. So it's inside here. Can you see that? Let me show you all the new gear. I'm gonna have to. I can't even get to it without rotating it. So let me grab a tester. So I rotated the gear open, and okay, there's nothing in that hole. It's open, so I suspect it's open in this one too. But I can't get it rotated enough. So what actually holds it is you got to take this off of here and then you got to take the pin out and then take it out of this housing. So see this whole housing has to be separated in order to get the pin out because the pin, you could see it from the bottom of there, it goes in. It's a one way type deal. Let me get it taken apart. Taking apart the gear is something that I'm quite familiar with. I've done it a bunch of times for different reasons. But this time, I think, since I have the brand new gear, and I'm not just dealing with a whole bunch of used parts, I'm going to go ahead and go through the work of getting it in. So, the wire is in here. There we go. It comes in right behind this bulkhead. Right back here. So, I unplugged it. That's the wire sitting there. I'm going to use this piece of wire that I'm showing you guys. This piece of wire to feed this through. Then I'm going to use it same wire to pull it back. So I'm going to just feed through the two of the wires. And then I'm going to take the copper part of the wire and bend it back. To give me a nice solid pulling surface. And then I'm going to take some tape and solidify that strength of that pull wire just so no mishaps happen while I'm pulling through and it's not super serious because it's a short distance it'll probably be pullable either way so then I'm gonna start pulling on my servo or my uh, landing gear for that matter and it's kind of tight so it's a tight squeeze through the hole but uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and work that it's hard with this camera work that and get it through all right, it's very hard to do this type of thing with the camera on you. So I'm just giving you guys kind of an update. I got the pull wire. I flipped the bird over now. I'm going to feed the wire into the cavity where the wire came from. And where well, you can see right there. Then I'm going to get it through. Hard to show you, so I'm going to just do it off camera. Of course, it was a tight fit, but I got the wire through. Now I'm going to flip it over and get the gear installed. Here we are. Like I said... This is all secured in place, so I'm going to just go ahead and uh, take this apart and put this, uh, basically leave this like it is and remove that from there and kind of get that installed done on this piece. So I just took this out of the servo. So now this piece here needs to go onto this piece here. Uh, the only thing holding it is a C-clip. 
right there. So I'm gonna just get a flat, tiny flat head, remove that C-clip, put it in that one, keep it moving. Of course, it wasn't the easiest thing to feed the wire through on the gear. So if you're doing this yourself, attach this before you do this, that pull wire, because I don't feel like pulling it out and doing it over again. So I'm gonna just fight this E-clip on this small piece here, which is not the easiest thing to do, but I'd rather do it flat on the surface like I did to take it off the old one. So know that. All right, so I got that E-clip on. I got this whole mechanism. Uh, it slides well. There was some grease on the one from the factory. So I'm gonna probably, there was a lot of grease on the outside of the, the piece. So I'm gonna just take a little bit with my hand and put it on the, the metal portion because that's where it needs it. And uh, I kind of keep an eye on that. If I need to add more, I have grease. I just you know, don't feel like looking forward to put it on there. All right, that slides right back in the hole. Let me go ahead and get this put in the servo first. I've made that mistake thousands of times where I put something in and didn't put this piece in first. And you end up having to take it apart because it's so hard to get this piece in. And it's also so hard to tape things while you're doing them. Which is why I probably crashed in the first place. <laughs> Uh, so get that work that down in the home. Get my strengthening metal bracket. Get that on. Now I am ready to secure it. I'll put the four screws back in. So just get that lined up. You don't need to see that part. All right, so I got the gear screwed in. I got a little extra wire that I need to pull the other way. Um, so that's the situation there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it flipped over, get it plugged in. Uh, and that'll be, that'll be it for that portion. I don't have, they were out of stock on the landing gear door, which you see in there in a roughed up status. I mean, uh, they didn't have it, so. This is gonna be something I can't do off camera, but I'm just get it plugged into the board where it goes. Not a big deal. So, all right, the gear seems to be facing forward a little slight bit, but this is the brand new gear, so I have to feel like that's the way it's gotta be. I never noticed it before, but it has to be. And that's it, it goes in perfect. My sequencer still works fine, so once I do get my gear replacement doors, I'll be able to hook those up. Um, just to kind of let you see the further carnage of what went down. Here's one of the doors. It kind of, I have one of the little holders uh, left, but the rest of them are ripped off. So I guess this went right here. And then this one only has one holder also. And it went right here. And this went to the sequencer. So. Yep, so I, I'm gonna wait for these coming stock. I'll probably get them since, you know, like I said, this is my most major purchase of a bird thus far. I definitely want it to be new. To be honest with you, when I did the bending that broke the, the pin on this gear, that was at my mistake because this thing is angled forward slightly. Um, and I was probably trying to get it more straight and I bent it forward than it, could, than it would need to go. So you live and you learn. Uh, it was good enough, it would have worked. But the new gear has better springiness, so it's, it's a good thing. I, I needed the gear anyway. I was going to get it. So that's that. So I'm ready to, one more pin to come in, and then I'm ready to try it all again. I probably won't cover, I will cover the pin, because the pin is going to be uh, way more simple. Uh, there is a screw a set screw in the front of this one so I'll be able to just take that set screw out pull that pin out put the new one in and keep it going so till then so got to take these screws out then underneath it there are four more I'm gonna get those out all right so I got the gear screws removed I got this little metal back and plate that strengthener or whatever very necessary thing I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the gear up all right, everything else went up. Got the access to that screw in the center that I was telling you about yesterday. Uh, this was gonna be too big. Let's see, flip to the other side with my fancy multi-tool. That's not it either. So I'm gonna go to the next size Allens that are in here. 
usually it's either one side or the other and this one here you see how it's more worn on this and the other side like these are the go-to for everything rc so mostly these are the ones that stay installed on here it's the small side is too small and the big side is money so i'm gonna go ahead and get that in get it it is really tight like lock tight tight Right. I'm gonna put more Loctite back in there, I guess. Yep, I can see the Loctite. So that sucker wasn't coming out. I set that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and it's gonna be. I'm gonna have to turn this over and shake it. So, something I can't get on the camera anyway. So be right back. In a true fashion of things, I can't get the pin out of there. So I'm gonna have to separate the housing. I didn't want to do that. I was hoping it just came right out, but. I've tapped it with tools and such, if it's not happening. So, go ahead and get the screws, take this housing apart. I decided one less ditch thing before taking the housing apart. I rotate the gear and I can see the pin from the back side. So, I'm going to, oh, there it is. You see it pop out of there? So, I popped it out. Now, I can grab it and remove it. That's it. Easy pin change. Let me get set up with the next one. So, I pulled the wheel and I took the side of the broken uh, piece out of it. I'm going to loosely get it realigned. Oh, there it is. All right, just for a measurement. Um, look at the parts I got from Freewing. I just bought a hodgepodge of parts because none of them exactly set for this, but they were listed. Some of them were listed on spare parts for this bird, so these should be it. Oh, and don't drop yours. It'll fall inside the flaps wing gap. I mean, a uh, hinge gap. So, yeah, these look like they're replacements and they have an offset kind of, yep, an offset flat spot on them. So, these actually don't have the same flat spot now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm sure it'll still work. This one has a flat spot on the side and then the front. This is a different setup altogether. This one has, yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, I just had it backwards. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in. The next kind of part will be determining where your flat sides go if you wasn't really paying attention when you took it apart. I kind of was, but I didn't worry about it because I figured I would illustrate how you figure this out. So, my gear's gonna sit in the hole like that. The set screw, as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and send them out. All right, so my, my flat spot for my set screw needs to be like that, facing the screw, right? So that means when it's down, this flat spot needs to go to this way because you have a choice. There's two set screws on the gear, so you could put it this way or you could put it this way. But to make this flat spot go where it's supposed to be, it's got to go facing forward in this gear. Not maybe the other side, but in this gear. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in and get it find my flat spot and all right that's it that's loose enough what i usually do with this is i take a measurement with my finger of where this flat spot is like that and then i go ahead and stick it in and then i tighten my screw till, till it's kind of snug but not tight all right and from that point i'm too tight at that point i kind of loosen it Yep, just like that usually. And you should be able to rock it. See I have a rocking. So now the screw is locked. The 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 the, the um axle is locked in, not axle, but the, the metal is locked in, right? So I know it's in the slot. I don't have to worry about whether I'm sending on that slot or not, then I can go ahead and tighten now. Alright. Let me uh, get these locked tight and I'll be right back. And I guess I'll use them because it came with them, but the 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 part that you buy to replace this with, it actually comes with two of the shallow screws and one of the longer screws to replace all of the screws so that you have fresh Loctite. I'm gonna go ahead and do it because why just put them in my box when I can, you know, have them for the need that they're for. So, which the Loctite on these is still hanging around pretty good, but now nah, I'm, I'm gonna use the fresh one. Once again, with this part of the gear, I tighten the screw up in small increments till I feel it rocking. I know I'm in the, I know I'm in the slot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down where it's tight because the other side looked tight like that. Um, and the gear looks pretty centered 
you know, with the flat spot, hitting it and making it sit where it's got to sit. You don't have much choice with that. I'm going to torque that down pretty good. And then I'm ready. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Ready to put my gear in now. There's some painted area that got pulled out. We'll go ahead and get that kind of fed in there because I don't want to have all of this showing. So. Get that stuck in. And probably get the gear installed. And I'm just put the screws in. Nothing big that you'd need to see a special video of. <laughs> put the four screws for the gear. Then the two screws for the cover. And then we'll try to see if it retracts. Alright, I got all the screws in. Oh, sorry. Forgot to put this cover on. But it might be best to get it in place and then put the screws in when it's actually down. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. I think I can reach them. Sometimes you might get to certain points when you're putting these kind of things together where the gear door or something is kind of in the way. And it's easier to just put the gear down versus trying to fight screwing it in with it out. And trying to do stuff on camera is the ultimate worst. Like it's so easy to just do your work, but... I really would like to get info to people. You know, some people kind of like curious about something and maybe squeamish about doing it. This is not a big deal and I'd like them to know about this. All right, without further ado, let's try to get the little dirt that kind of fell in there for so much. Oh, nice, perfect flush fit. I might actually change the one out on the other side because if you look, it looks like it's a little lifted. And just in a... For the purpose of getting it as best I can. I have another one. This one will still be good. I'll pull that out and kind of put it in just to make them all safe flush. Let me do that. Be right back. I got that second gear rebuilt. You see how flush that finishes now? I'm going to be much more satisfied with that. I also noticed like the two separate parts I got from Free Wing that were the same thing. One set had slots on both sides. Like you saw the first gear that I installed. Uh, and all of these, I bought like four of them. So all of them the same part number. But... The first one I installed, I didn't even pay attention, but it had a slot on both on one side, like the original part did. But the new ones, some of the new ones have a slot on both sides, which, you know, the, the gear part doesn't need it. But the part, I'm sorry, the part on the retract itself doesn't need it because it only has one screw. But the ones on the uh, this side, it, it, it's probably beneficial to have two slots. I already got that one finished, so I'm not going to fool with it. But if I have any trouble, I got extras for that purpose. I did also buy this one for the front wheel and I'll probably go ahead and get that put in just so that the extra gear that I have is like already rebuilt in case I do need it. I don't have to do any work to it, but really satisfied with the way that finishes after I crash um, and I'm locking and rolling. The only part I'm going to have is that this is still out of stock, these doors, and I know you hear the sequencer servo still going, but everything is, is working and uh, should be good. We're ready for the road sequencer. <laughs> all right so bad side with the pin uh it this got some springiness to it i don't i feel like i have to figure out what they got in the other gear and i'd have to take that apart to do so but uh anyway i, I got an extra gear that i can use if i needed to in a pinch um so i'm gonna see if these screws fit in this they do go ahead and get this uh Oh, that's right. I'm, there is no screw in there. I was about to say get the screw out before I can't take it out because you'll be trying to hold that little small block in place. And that won't be fun. So I'm going to get all of these screws out of the side of the gear. Uh, retract housing. <laughs> so in taking these pins out, I would say I have come across gear that have different size. It's usually right here though. And on most other smaller gear, it tapers right there. So there's a smaller screw. But I still kind of oriented them the way they came out so I can remember how they went out. All right, I got the last two loose and then, all right, yeah, the housing kind of separated. I usually just figure which side is going to go easier and I just kind of go that way. Sometimes one side will go easier than the other. And then in that case, you'll adjust. So I'm going to push the pin out. It's loose. We'll go ahead and get this thing. Loosen the screws in the pin here. All right, it's loose. So now I'm going to take the pin all the way out. And get a size reference. 
uh, so the one that I originally bought that was supposed to be for this plane is too short. But fortunately, I bought one for an 80. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> it's a good thing I decided to buy that one. So that looks like the animal I need. It's got the pin at the bottom. Yep. So the one that actually was supposed to fit this is too small. By a long shot, actually. So, you see how short that is? So I bought one. See that one says F1464 main nose gear axle uh you know right here I, I don't know but this one here was for an 80 millimeter bird F F86 obviously and that looks like the part I need so man I'm so I, I didn't need this part actually because this gear isn't for anything so maybe I shouldn't put it in, in case I do need it for another need uh I don't know nope I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and in the event that I need it I know it's there no big deal all right so I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in here all right I'm gonna spin it oh I see the flat spot is there oh this one doesn't have a flat spot in the right spot so I can't use it either oh uh, let me see this can't go in this way can it yeah I forgot the orientation that it was yeah the flat spot is way in the wrong place for these gear on this one. Oh, there is no flat spot. What am I? Man, I'm tripping. There is no flat spot because it just sits in there loose. Yeah, and the flat spots are just on the gear itself. So let's see uh, how this will hold up. There's no flat spot down there. So then there's one flat spot on this that goes that way. Holding these two together. One flat spot there. One flat spot there. And both of the flat spots at the top go that way. So, yep, this is the pin for the job. I'm looking for a place to screw it down through this hole, which doesn't exist. So, we can get this place oriented in here like it goes. Get the motor set back in. Uh, get the housing for the other side. Flip it over. And there's a peg right there in the middle. You got to make sure that's in. And it went right back together. No problem. Everything seems pretty cool. Aesthetic. Get my trusty small screwdriver. Start the tightening process. The reason why that one can't pin in. Because this is the front gear. And it needs to spin so that the wheel turns. And you know. Just when you're looking at things like that. You don't be thinking about every detail until you kind of put it all together in your mind man these screws are so small that I uh it was in my hand and I didn't even feel it was there all right I'm gonna just get these screwed in no big deal you need to be on camera for that that's the entire repair I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to a servo tester and just retract it so it could store easier so All right, that's it.